Welcome to Pastor Andrew's Inspirations. In this video, I will be talking about the biblical city of Akkad. The Akkadian Empire was the first ancient empire of Mesopotamia, positioned in the city of Akkad. And its encircling region which the Bible also called Akkad. The spelling may fool you as Akkad is also spelt A-K-K-A-D but the pronunciation is A-E-K-A-E-D Akkad. The Empire united Akkadian and Sumerian speakers under one rule. The Akkadian Empire used control across Mesopotamia to the Levant and Anatolia sending military missions as far south as Bahran and Oman in the Arabian Peninsula. During the third era BC, there established a cultural association between the Sumerians and the Akkadians, which involved extensive bilingualism. Akkadian and East Semitic language slowly superseded Sumerian as a spoken language somewhere between the third and the second era. BC. The Akkadian Empire attained its political peak between the 24th and the 22nd centuries BC, succeeding the conquest by its founder, Sharukin of Akkad. Under Sharukin and his heirs, the Akkadian language was briefly imposed on nearby defeated states such as Elam and Gutium. Akkad is occasionally deemed as the first empire in history, though the meaning of this term is not exact and there are earlier Sumerian claimants. After the fall of the Akkadian Empire, the people of Mesopotamia finally united into two major Akkadian speaking nations, Assyria in the north and a few centuries later Babylonia in the south. The Bible refers to Akkad as the great city in Genesis chapter 10 verses 10 to 12 which states the beginning of his Nimrod's kingdom was Babel and Eric and Akkad and Kalne in the land of Shinar. Out of that land he went forth into Assyria and builded Nineveh and Rohaboth Ir and Calais and Rezin between Nineveh and Calais. The same is the great city. Nimrod's historical identity is unidentified or disputed, but Nimrod has been identified as Sharukin of Akkad by some, and others have compared him with the legendary Gilgamesh, founder of Uruk. Today, scholars have detailed some 7,000 texts from the Akkadian period written in both Sumerian and Akkadian. Many later texts from the descendant states of Assyria and Babylonia also deal with the Akkadian Empire. Accepting the Akkadian Empire continues to be hindered by the fact that its capital, Akkad, has not yet been located, despite numerous attempts. Precise dating of archaeological sites is held up 
by the fact that there are no clear differences between artifact groupings. Thought to stem from the previous early dynastic period and those thought to be Akkadian. Likewise, objects that are thought to be Akkadian continue to be in use into the Ur-3 period. Many of the more recent insights of the Akkadian Empire have come from diggings in the upper Kabur area in modern northeastern Syria, which was to become a part of Assyria after the fall of Akkad. For example, diggings at ancient Urkesh brought to light a ceiling of Taramagade, a formerly unknown daughter of Naram Sin, who was perhaps married to an unnamed local Endin ruler. The diggers at nearby ancient Shekna Shabutna and Lille used the results from their soundings to argue that the Akkadian Empire came to an end due to a sudden drought, the so-called 4.2 kilo year event. The impact of this climate event on Mesopotamia and the Akkadian Empire continues to be hotly debated. Digging at the site of Tel Brak has suggested that the Akkadians rebuilt a city, Brak or Nagar, on this site, used as a managerial center. The city included two large buildings, including a complex with temples, offices, a courtyard, and large ovens. The Akkadian period is generally dated to either 2334 BC to 2154 BC according to the middle chronology timeline of the ancient Near East or 2270 BC to 2083 BC according to the short chronology timeline of the ancient Near East. It was followed by the early dynastic period of Mesopotamia and succeeded by the Earth 3 period, although both transitions are blurry. For example, the rise of Sharukin of Akkad overlapped with the late ED period and that the final Akkadian kings ruled at the same time with the Gushin kings together with rulers at the city-states of both Uruk and Lagash. The relative order of Akkadian kings is clear. The absolute dates of their reigns are approximate, as with all dates prior to the late Bronze Age collapse 1200 BC. Sharukin ruled 2334 to 2279. Ramush ruled from 2278 to 2270. Manishtish Shu ruled 2269 to 2255. Naram Sin ruled 2254 to 2218. Sharkali Shari ruled from 2217 to 2193. And Dudu ruled 2189 to 2169. Last but not least, Shu Turo, who was the first ruler from 2168 to 2154. You'll notice in most texts, the years that they ruled are dated in the reverse. Why, I'm not sure of, but a lot of nationalities have a way of doing things a little backwards. The Akkadian Empire gets its name from the region and city of Akkad, both of which were contained in the overall Union area of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. 
the city of Acade has not yet been branded on the ground, but it is known from various textual sources. Among these is at least one text preceding the reign of Shaokin. The name Akkad is of non-Akkadian origin. This proposes that the city of Akkad may have been inhabited in pre-Sharukinic times. Sharukin of Akkad means legitimate king, possibly a title he took on gaining power. He defeated and captured Lugalzegsi in the Battle of Uruk and conquered his empire. The earliest records in the Akkadian language date to the time of Sharukin. Sharukin was taken to be the son of Labum or Itibel, a humble gardener and possibly a Herodul or priestess to Ishtar or Anan. One legend related to Sharokin in Assyrian times says that my mother was a changeling, my father I knew not. The brothers of my father loved the hills. My city is Azerpiranu, or the wilderness herb fields, which is situated on the banks of the Euphrates. My changeling mother conceived me in secret, she bore me. She set me in a basket of rushes with bitumen, she sealed my lid. She cast me into the river which rose not over me. The river bore me up and carried me to a key, the drawer of water. A key, the drawer of water, took me as his son and reared me. A key, the drawer of water, appointed me as his gardener. While I was gardener, Ishtar granted me her love, and for four and fifty years I exercised kingship. Later claims made on behalf of Sharokin were that his mother was an high priestess. The claims were made to ensure a pedigree of nobility, since only a highly placed family could achieve such a position. Originally a cupbearer, Rabshaki to a king of Kish with the Semitic name Yerzababa, Sharukin thus became a gardener responsible for the task of clearing out irrigation canals. The royal cupbearer was a noticeable civil status, close to the king and with many high-level duties, not implied by the title of the status itself. This gave him access to well-ordered corps of workers, who also may have served as his first soldiers. Austin Urzababa Sharukin was crowned king, and he entered upon a career of foreign triumph. Four times he invaded Syria and Canaan, and he spent three years fully quelling the countries of the west to unite them with Mesopotamia into a single empire. Sharukin took this process further, defeating many of the encircling regions to create an empire that reached westward to the Mediterranean Sea, and perhaps Cyprus, Captara, northward to the mountains, well into Anatolia, eastward to Elam, and the southward to Magan, or Omen, and he reigned for ostensibly 56 years, though only four year names survive. He united his dominion over his lands by replacing the early arrival rulers with noble citizens of Akkad, his native city where loyalty would be ensured. Trade went from the silver mines of Anatolia to the lapis lazuli mines in modern Afghanistan, the cedars of Lebanon and the copper of Magan. Consolidation of summer and Akkad showed the growing power of Mesopotamia. The empire's breadbasket was the rain-fed farming system of Assyria, and fortresses were built to control the wheat production. Images of Sharukin were erected on the shores of the Mediterranean, 
in token of victories, cities and palaces were, were built at home with the materials of the conquered lands. In Lamb, in the northern part of Mesopotamia, were also dominated and rebellions in summer were put down. Contracts have been found dated in the years of the campaigns against Canaan and against Sarlacc, king of Gudium. He boasted of conquering the four quarters surrounding Akkad, north to Assyria, south to Summer, east to Elam, and west to Martu. Some of the earliest texts suggest he rebuilt the city of Babylon in its new location near Akkad. Sherukin showed special difference to the Sumerian deities, particularly Ishtar, his patroness, and Zababa, the warrior god of Kish. He called himself the anointed priest of Anu, the great Ensi of Enlil, and his daughter Ehudwina was installed as priestess to Nana at the temple in Ur. In his old age all the lands revolted against him, and they besieged him in the city of Akkad. He went forth to battle, defeated them, knocked them over, and destroyed their vast army. This refers to his campaign in Elam, where he defeated a coalition army led by the king of Awan, and forced the defeated to become his vessels. Shortly after, another revolt took place. The mountainous tribes of Assyria in their turn attacked, but then submitted and Shurukin settled their tenancies and he stuck them fatally. Shurukin had crushed opposition even at old age. These difficulties broke out again in the reign of his sons where revolts broke out during the nine-year reign of Ramush, 2270 to 2278 BC, who fought hard to retain the empire and was successful until he was assassinated by some of his own courtiers. Ramush's elder brother, Manishtushi, from 2255 to 2269 BC, succeeded him. The latter seems to have fought a sea battle against 32 kings who had gathered against him and took control over their pre-Arab country consisting of modern-day United Arab Emirates and Oman. Despite the success, like his brother, he seems to have been assassinated in a palace conspiracy. Manishtushi's son and successor, Naram Sin, from 2218 to 2254 BC, assumed the imperial title. King Naram Sin, king of the four quarters, the four quarters being referred to the entire world, he was also for the first time in Sumerian culture addressed as the god Elu of Akkad. In opposition to religious belief that kings were only counsels of the people towards the gods, he also faced revolts at the start of his reign, but quickly crushed them. Naramsin also recorded the Akkadian conquest of Ebla and Armanum and its kings. To better police Syria, he built a royal residence at Tel Brak, a crossroads at the heart of the Kabur River, basin of Jazira. Naramsin campaigned against Magan, which also revolted. Naramsin marched against Magan and personally caught Mandanu, its king. He instated garrisons to protect the main roads. A campaign against the, l the lullaby led to the carving of the victory stele of Naram Suin, now in the Louvre. 
Some sources claim the Ramsin of Akkad even ventured into Anatolia, battling the Hittite and Hurrian kings Pamba of Hadi, Zipani of Kanesh, and 15 others. This newfound Akkadian wealth was based upon benign climatic conditions, huge agricultural surpluses, and the confiscation of the wealth of other people. The economy was highly planned. Rations of grain and oil were distributed in standardized vessels made by the city's potters. Taxes were paid in produce and labor on public walls, including city walls, temples, irrigation canals, and waterways producing huge agricultural surpluses. In Assyrian and Babylonian texts the name Akkad appears as part of the royal title as in the Akkadian Sarmati Sumeri U Akkadi translating to King of Summer and Akkad. <clears throat> this title was assumed by the king who seized control of Nippur, the intellectual and religious center of the southern Mesopotamia. During the Akkadian period, the Akkadian language became the first language of the Middle East and was officially used for administration. The spread of Akkadian stretched from Syria to Elam, and even the Elamite language was temporarily written in Mesopotamian cuneiform. Akkadian texts found their way to far off places from Egypt in the Amarna period and Anatolia to Persia. Sumerian rules such as rulers such as Lagul Ushamgal, Governor Ensi of Lagash, Sherpula from 2210 to 2230 before Christ E. Several descriptions of Lugalal Ushmagal refer to him as governor of Lagash and at the time a servant of Naram Sin as well as his successor Shar Kali Shari. One of these seals proclaims Naramsin, the mighty god of Agade, king of the four corners of the world. Lugalushumgal, the scribe, Ensi of Lagash, is thy servant. Lugalushumgal was a traitor of the Akkadian Empire and was Meskigal, ruler of Adab. Lugal Ushungo was succeeded by Puzer Mama, who, as Akkadian waned, achieving independence from Sharkali Shari, assuming the title of King of Lagash and starting the illustrious Second Dynasty of Lagash. The Empire of Akkad fell, perhaps in the 22nd century BC within 180 years of its founding, ushering in a dark age. There was no imperial authority until Third Dynasty of Ur. Shudural appears to have restored some centralized authority, but he was unable to prevent the empire eventually collapsing outright from the invasion of barbarian peoples from the Zagros Mountains known as the Gushians. <coughs> Little is known about the Gushan period. Cuneiform sources suggest that the Gushan's administration showed little concern for maintaining agriculture, written records, or public safety. They reputedly released all farm animals to roam about the Mesopotamia freely and soon brought about famine 
and rocketing grain prices. The Sumerian king Ur Namu from 2095 BC to 2112 BC cleared the Gushans from the Mesopotamia during this reign. The Sumerian king list describing the Akkadian Empire after the death of Sharkali Shari states who was king who was not king Urgigi the king Nanum the king Emi the king Lulu the king the four of them were kings but reigned only three years. Dudu reigned 21 years. Shuturl, the son of Dudu, reigned 15 years. Agade was defeated and its kingship carried off to Uruk. In Uruk, Erningen reigned seven years. Urgiger, son of Erningen, reigned six years. Kuda reigned six years. Puzarili reigned five years. Ur Utu reigned six years. Uruk was written with, with Uruk was smitten with weapons and its kingship carried off by the Gushan hordes. However, no year, names, or other archaeological evidence verified any of these later kings of Akkad or Uruk, apart from a single artifact. Referencing King Dudu of Akkad. The name Kings of Uruk were colleagues of the last kings of Akkad. But n could not have been prominent. In the Gushin hordes, first reigned a nameless king, then Imta reigned three years as king. Sholm reigned six years, Elumesh reigned six years, and Imbakesh reigned five years, Igishwash reigned six years, Larlagab reigned fifteen years. Ibate reigned three years and Karum reigned one year, followed by Laram, who reigned two years, Ibranum, who reigned one year, and Hablam, who reigned two years. Puzer Sin, son of Hublam, or Hablam, reigned seven years, Larlaganda reigned seven years. A total 21 kings reigned 91 years and 40 days. Some not even being known. Between 2004 and 2112 BC is known as the Ur III period. One account for the end of the Akkadian Empire is that the Akkadian dynasty could not uphold its supremacy over other cities or states. One theory says the end of the Akkadian period and the first intermediary period following the Old Kingdom in ancient Egypt was related with rapidly increasing drought and falling and failing rainfall in the region of the ancient Near East. after four centuries of urban life. This sudden climatic change caused desertion of the Tel Lilan and the collapse of the Akkadian Empire based Mesopotamia. The same collapse in nearby regions tells us that the impact was widespread. 
Noah's Atlantic oscillation on the stream flow of the Tigris and Euphrates led to the collapse of the Akkadian Empire. Tel Lalan was abandoned soon after the city's massive walls were constructed. Its temple rebuilt and its grain production reorganized. The debris, dust, and sand show trace of human activity. Soil samples show fine wind blown sand, no trace of earthworm activity, reduced rainfall, and indications of a drier and windier climate. Evidence shows that skeleton thin sheep and cattle died of drought and up to 28,000 people deserted the site seeking wetter areas elsewhere. Tell Brack shrank in size by 75% the trade collapsed. Nomadic herders such as the Amorites moved herds closer to reliable water suppliers, bringing them into conflict with Akkadian populations. This climate induced collapse seems to have affected the whole of the Middle East and to have coincided with the collapse of the Egyptian Old Kingdom. This collapse of rain-fed agriculture in the upper country meant loss to southern Mesopotamia of the agrar agrarian subsidies which had kept the Akkadian Empire solvent. Water levels within the Tigris and Euphrates fell 1.5 meters beneath the level of 2600 BC. And although they stabilized for a time during the following Earth 3 period, Rivalries between pastoralists and farmers increased. Attempts were made to prevent herding of flocks in agricultural lands, such as the building of a 180 kilometer wall, known as the repeller of the Amorites, between the Tigris and Euphrates under the Earth 3 ruler Shusin. Such attempts led to increased political instability. Severe depression occurred to re-establish demographic equilibrium with the less favorable climatic conditions. In 2019, a study by Hokkaido University on fossil corals in Omen provides an evidence that prolonged winter shamal seasons led to the salinization of the irrigated fields, hence a dramatic decrease in crop production triggered a widespread famine and eventually the collapse of the ancient Akkadian Empire. The Akkadian government formed a classical standard with which all future Mesopotamian states compared themselves. As Sherokin extended his land from the Persian Gulf to the Mediterranean, it was felt that he ruled the totality of the lands under heaven, or from sunrise to sunset. Under Sherokin, the Ensis generally retained their positions, but were seen more as provincial governors. The title Sarkazadi became recognized as meaning Lord of the Universe. Sharokin is even recorded as having organized naval exp expeditions to Bahran and Magan. Amongst the first organized military naval expeditions in history. Whether he also did in the case of the Mediterranean with the Kingdom of Kaptara as claimed in the later documents is more questionable. With Naram Sin, 
Sharokin's grandson. This went further than the sh with Sharokin. With the king not only being called Lord of the Four Quarters of the Earth, of the Earth, but also elevated to the ranks of the gods, with his own temple established. Previously, a ruler could, could like Gilgamesh, become divine after death. But the Akkadian kings, from Naram Sin onward, were considered gods on earth in their lifetime. Their portraits showed them of larger size than mere mortals, and at some distance from their retainers. One strategy adopted by both Sharokin and Naramsin to keep control of the country was to install their daughters, Enidwana and Emanana, respectively, as high priestess to Sin. The Akkadian version of the Sumerian moon deity, Nana at Ur, in the extreme south of su Summer, to install sons as provincial NC governors in strategic locations and to marry their daughters to rulers of peripheral parts of the empire Urkesh and Marhash. A well-documented case of the latter is that of Naram Sin's daughter, Taramagade, at Urkesh. Records at the BRAC administrative complex suggest that the Akkadians appointed locals as tax collectors. The population of Akkad was entirely dependent upon the agricultural systems of the region, which seem to have had two major centers the irrigated farmlands of southern Iraq that traditionally had a yield of 30 grains returned for each grain sown and the rain-fed agriculture of northern Iraq known as the upper country. Southern Iraq during Akkadian period seems to have been approaching its modern rainfall level of less than 20 millimeters per year agricultural agriculture was totally dependent upon that irrigation before the Akkadian period the progressive salinization of the soils or salinization of the soils produced by poorly drained irrigation had been reducing yields of wheat in the southern part of the country leading to the conversion to more salt-tolerant barley growing. Urban populations there had peaked already by 2600 BC, and demographic pressures were high, contributing to the rise of militarism immediately before the Akkadian period, as seen in the stele of vultures of Iantanum. Warfare between city-states had led to the population decline, from which Akkad provided a temporary respite. This high degree of agricultural production in the south enabled the growth of the highest population densities in the world at this time, giving Akkad its military advantage. The water table in this region was very high and replenished regularly by winter storms in the headwaters of the Tigris and Euphrates from October to March and from snow melt from March to July. Flood levels that had been stable from about 2600 to 3000 BC started falling and by the Akkadian period were a half meter to a meter lower than before. Even so, the flat country and weather uncertainties made flooding more unpredictable than in the case of the Nile. Serious deluges were a regular occurrence, requiring constant maintenance of irrigation ditches and drainage systems. Farmers were forced into regiments for this work, 
from August to October. A period of food shortage under the control of city temple authorities, thus acting as a form of unemployment relief. Gwendolyn Like has suggested that this was Sharokin's original employment for the King of Kish, giving him experience in effectively leading large groups of men. A tablet reads Sharokin, the King to whom Enlil permitted no rival. 5,400 warriors ate bread daily before him. Harvest was in the late spring and dry summer months. Nomadic Amorites from the northwest would pasture their flocks of sheep and goats to graze on the crop residue and be watered from the river and irrigation canals. For this privilege they would have to pay a tax in wool, meat, milk, and cheese to the temples who would distribute these products to the bureaucracy and priesthood. In good years all would go well, but in bad years wild winter pastures would be in short supply. Nomads would seek to pasture their flocks in the grain fields, and conflicts with farmers would result. It would appear that the subsidizing of southern populations by the import of wheat from the north of the empire temporarily solved this problem. And it seems to have allowed economic recovery and a growing population within this region. As a result, summer in Akkad had a surplus of agricultural products but was short of almost everything else particularly metal, ores, timber, and building stone, all of which had to be imported. The spread of the Akkadian state as far as possible the Taurus, to the Taurus Mountains, the cedars of Lebanon, and the copper deposits of Magan was largely motivated by the goal of securing control over these imports. Another tablet reads, Sharukin, the king of Kish, triumphed in 34 battles over the cities up to the edge of the sea and destroyed their walls. He made the ships from Maluha, the ships from Magan, and the ships from Dilmun tie up alongside the quay of Agade. Sharukin, the king of prostrated himself before the god Dagon and made supplication to him and Dagon gave him the upper hand the upper land and namely Mari, Yarmudi and Abla up to the cedar forest and up to the silver mountain therefore he was given power international trade developed during the Akkadian period. Indus-Mesopotamia relations also seem to have expanded Sharukin of Akkad 2250 BC was the first Mesopotamian ruler to make an explicit reference to the region of Maluha which is generally understood as being the Balochistan for the Indus area. In art, there was a great emphasis on the kings of the dynasty, alongside much that continued earlier Sumerian art. Little architecture remains. In large works and small ones, such as seals, the degree of realism was considerably increased. But the seals show a grim world of cruel conflict, of danger and uncertainty. A world in which man is subjected without appeal to the unfathomable acts of distant and fearful divinities, who he must serve but cannot love. The Akkadians used visual arts as a vehicle of ideology. They developed 
a new style for cylinder seals by reusing traditional animal decorations but organizing them around inscriptions which often became central parts of the layout. The figures also became more sculptural and naturalistic. New elements were also included, especially in relation to the rich Akkadian mythology. During the third millennium BC there developed a very intimate cultural symbiosis between the Sumerians and the Akkadians, which included widespread bilingualism. The influence of Sumerian and Akkadian and vice versa is evident in all areas. From lexical borrowing on a massive scale to syntactic, morphological, and phonological convergence. This has prompted scholars to refer to Sumerian and Akkadian in the third era as a sprachbund. Akkadian gradually replaced Sumerian as a spoken language somewhere around 2000 BC. The exact date being a matter of debate, but Sumerian continued to be used as a sacred, ceremonial, literary, and scientific language in Mesopotamia until the first century AD. Sumerian literature continued in rich development during the Akkadian period. Ehedwana, the wife of Nana, the Sumerian moon god and daughter of Sharokin of the Temple of Sin at Ur, who lived 2250 to 2285 BC, is the first poet in history whose name is known. Her known works include hymns to the goddess Inanna, the exaltation of Inanna, and Enin Sagura. A third work, the Temple Hymns, a collection of specific hymns addresses the sacred temples and their occupants, the deity to whom they were consecrated. The works of this poet are important because although they start out using the third person, they shift to the first person voice of the poet herself, and they mark an important growth in the use of cuneiform. As poet, princess, and priestess, she was a person who, according to William W. Hallow, set standards in all three of her roles for many succeeding centuries. In the exaltation of Inanna, in a duana, depicts Inanna as punishing mankind as a goddess of battle. She thus unites the warlike Akkadian Ishtar's qualities to those of the gentler Sumerian goddess of love and fruitfulness. She likens Inanna to the great storm bird who swoops down on the lesser gods and sends them fluttering off like surprised bats. Then in probably the most interesting part of the hymn and Edwana herself steps forward in the first person to recite her own past glories, launching her credibility and clarifying her present plight. She has been banished as high priestess from the temple in the city of Ur and from Uruk and exiled to the steppe. She, be she begs the moon god's Nana to intercede for her because the city of Uruk under the ruler Lugalan has rebelled against Sharukin. The rebel Lugalan has even destroyed the temple Iana, one of the greatest temples in the ancient world, and then made advances on his sister-in-law. Later material described how the fall of Akkad was due to Naramsin's attack upon the city of Nippur. When prompted by a pair of inauspicious oracles, the king sacked the Eker temple supposedly protected by the god Enlil, head of the pantheon. 
As a result of this, eight chief deities of the Anunnaki pantheon were supposed to have come together and withdrawn their support from a cave. For the first time since cities were built and founded, the great agricultural tracts produced no grain. The inundated tracts produced no fish. The irrigated orchards produced neither syrup nor wine. The gathered clouds did not rain. The masgarum did not grow. At that time, one shekel's worth of oil was only one half quart. One shekel's worth of grain was only one half quart. These solid, these sold at such prices in the markets of all cities. He who slept on the roof died on the roof. He who slept in the house had no burial. People were flailing at themselves from hunger. The kings of Akkad were legendary among later Mesopotamian civilizations, which Sharukin understood as the prototype of a strong and wise leader. And his grandson Narumsin considered the wicked and impious leader Anil Shurazar in the analysis of Hans Gustav Gutterbuck, who brought ruin upon his kingdom. Tablets from the periods read, From the earliest days no one had made a statue of lead, but Ramush, king of Kish, had a statue of himself made of lead. It stood before Enlil and it recited his Ramush's virtues to the Idu of the gods. The copper Basketi, the copper Basetki statue cast with the lo lost wax method testifies to the high level of skill that craftsmen achieved from the Akkadian period. The empire was bound together by roads, along which there was a regular postal service. Clay seals that took the place of stamps bear the names of Sharokin and his son. A cadastral survey seems also to have been instituted, and one of the documents related to it states that a certain Uru Malik, whose name appears to indicate his Canaanite origin, was governor of the land of Amorites, or Amaru as the semi-nomadic people of Syria and Canaan were called in Akkadian. The first collection of astronomical observations and terrestrial omens was made for a library established by Sharukin. The earliest year names whereby each year of, king, of a king's reign was named after a significant event performed by that king. Date from Sharokin's reign. Lists of these year names henceforth became a calendrical system used in most independent Mesopotamian city-states. In Assyria, however, years came to be named for the annual presiding Limu office appointed by the king rather than for an event. So there you have it. This was the biblical city of Akkad. God's blessings be upon you.